Good morning from cold New York, quite chilly here. Uh, and I've got a bit of a cold, so I hope that it doesn't interfere with this presentation. What I'm going to do in this presentation is I'm going to redo the two simple examples that illustrate the use of Rayleigh's dissipation function to include friction or a dissipative force alongside Euler-Lagrange's equation. I will talk about it generally. But before I do that, I'll go over a little bit of the history. The history of the principle of least action. Because it's not just Lagrange involved here, right? Uh, the earliest, I think, that it comes into play is Fermat's principle from optics. Pierre Fermat. 1607, I don't remember, it's the 1665. But he formulated his optics principle in 1662. What does that stay? That means if you have a ray of light traveling through different media with different refractive indices, it could be one kind of glass, another kind of glass, air, water, oil, different layers. The path is going to be a zigzaggedy path, but that light ray chooses a path such that the time between point A and point B, when it goes through all these things, let's say we have a whole lot of different materials, a light ray comes in, it gets refracted, diffracted all over the place, such that the time between B and A is a minimum for the light ray. How does light know how to do that? Well, I don't know. Nobody else does either. But it's a principle of least action. Actually, for this case, a principle of least time. Now, that can be reformulated in a modern way. And it's a long story. Someday I might do a whole talk on that. OK, so Fermat did this in 1662. In 1705, about 40 years later, Gottfried Leibniz did a mechanics version of the same thing. He, he, he did it before all these other guys down here. And uh, about 40 years before the big flurry of activity. And Leibniz does not get the, get the proper uh, recognition for his invention of calculus. He's overshadowed by Newton. Well, he lived between 1647 and 1716. Now, Maupertuis, I don't know his first name, 1698 to 1759, has a principle which is also a mechanics principle of least action. I think that's the first time it really comes in as a strong principle, and he did that in 1746. Leonard Euler, Calculus of Variations. There's an Euler equation in the Calculus of Variations, but it's the same as the Lagrange's equation in mechanics. Now, interestingly, Euler had a student Guess who the student was? Joe Louis Lagrange. Joseph Louis Lagrange was Euler's student. And Euler was Swiss. Very often you see portraits of these guys, and they don't look, they look like struggling to recognize the person in the old portraits. But the portrait of Euler looks like a photograph taken yesterday. I guess you guys should go and have a look at him. He was Swiss. Euler had a student, but he also had a teacher. His dissertation supervisor, Guess who it was? It was Bernoulli, all right? Bernoulli of uh, fluid dynamics fame. So now Lagrange comes into the fray. In 1744, he formulated the mechanics principle the, of least action in terms of minimizing the action using his Lagrange's equation. We're going to use it in a minute to do our two examples again. And William Rowan Hamilton, oh yes, Lagrange lived between 1736 and 1813. And uh, his principle, his, his, Lagrange's equation came out in 1744, all right? Now, William Rowan Hamilton, whose family is buried in my village in Ireland, he was Anglo-Irish, he really formulated this whole system of mechanics in a slightly different way, but it's his principle called the principle of least action that's known nowadays as the mechanical one, right? Hamilton's equations I've covered in a short lecture. I haven't gone into them in depth. That's coming up, okay? So William Rowan Hamilton he lived in Dublin. He became a professor in Dunsink, which is just down the road from where I grew up. It's an observatory. Uh, and his family tomb is Dunboy. I think I fell into the crypt when I was a kid. Um, I didn't even know he was buried there. And even recently, I didn't even know it was the same family. But I grew up with the Hamiltons. They were a wealthy family locally. Anyway, that's the history. So let's go to our two problems. Now, 
Lagrange's equation looks like this. That's in the absence of dissipative forces. And I said before that this is a force part. And this is a, um, a gradient of a potential part. And this works when the path between one part and another part of evolution of the system is independent, path independence. But ever, if you're extracting energy from the system, which happens when you have friction, if you're going along the surface, friction is being a is you, it, it, friction is extracting joules per second from the system. You have to have a, an equation to represent that. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll take Rayleigh's dissipation function and take its derivative with respect to the velocity. Right? I said before, the dissipation function is like a power. It's f dot v. So I take a derivative with respect to v and I get the f because this all has equation, has newtons as units, right? So this will have newtons also. Rayleigh's dissipation function. So let's not stare at that. I didn't do that very neatly. Okay. So the first question, the first, uh, let me get rid of this now. First problem I looked at was the problem of a mass sliding on an incline with a coefficient of friction mu. And it's free to move. And it's going to have a component of weight, which is which is resolvable into these two components, mg cosine theta minus mg vertically, because we chose the x-axis to be this one and the y-axis to be up like this. So therefore then, there's going to be a normal force, and the force of friction is mu n. With n minus mg cos theta equals zero, so n is m g cos theta, so that this is going to be mu m g cos theta. So that's our force of friction. So therefore then, our Rayleigh dissipation function g cosine theta x dot. It's linear in the velocity, okay? So now let's set up our Lagrangian. Well, it's going to have its kinetic part minus the potential. Now what is the h? x sine theta, this is the h, so there's our potential term, okay? So now that's our L equals t minus v, and I have to add in, so first of all we'll operate and apply Lagrange's equations. d by t by dl by dx dot, is just m x double dot minus dl by dx
That's minus dl by dx. And now the Rayleigh dissipation function taken its derivative with respect to x dot. And I get mu mg cosine theta. So now let's just simplify it. We'll divide across by m. Now this should be positive here. This is that there. Okay. I don't want to screw up again. And I can bring the whole thing over and divide out. I guess I can divide across by G. same result that I got before when I was just using Newton's laws. Now that was our first example, and I just included a Rayleigh dissipation function of this form. Now that's a bit of trickery. So this has nothing to do with the principle of least action that was there at all. I'm just accounting for the fact that I'm taking energy out of the system. Lord Rayleigh introduced that. John Strutt was his real name. Okay, let's look at the other problem that I did. Now, the mistake I made in the last one was I did not specify that the spring had a mass which was either negligible or zero. So in an idealized case, this is coming up. What we had was System like this. We had a fluid with a non zero coefficient of viscosity, which caused this mass to get damped in its motion, right? And this is the x direction. And the spring had a constant k. And I'm going to say now that the mass of the spring is negligible or zero. Actually, set it to zero. It's an idealized case. So we need to set up our Lagrangian. So what is the V? Well, there's going to be a contribution due to the uh, gravity and a contribution due to the spring. H is x. And I get a half k x squared. Now, what's our Rayleigh dissipation function? Well, I said there are several terms in it, but I just made them all into a constant. And the V is going to be squared in this case because uh, we're going to expect a linear relationship between the viscosity damping and the velocity. In other words, the faster the mass is moving, the greater the damping. So I put in for the V. So L equals T minus V. So let's set up Lagrange's equation. Now, acting on x dot, I get the same thing as before. Minus dl by dx. dl by dx here is mg with a negative sign. And here is kx. 
Now we add in Rayleigh's dissipation function. What we need is derivative. Just two lambda x dot. So there's our equation. Let's extract the brackets. Uh, let's divide across by m. This is where I screwed up the last time. And we're going to get an equation of slightly driven damped harmonic motion. So, let's remove this and throw it up on the top. This one here. I'll take the velocity term next. I'll take the constant term next. And I'll bring the g over, yeah, like that. Now, if g was 0, this would be a, an equation of the form of of that. And that has a solution uh, that looks like this. There's going to be a decaying exponential part plus the simple harmonic part for all these particular things. This bit I'm not sure about. It's a constant. So maybe someday I'll have time to solve this properly. But right now I'm just setting it up. Okay, so you see how it works? That's how it works. Now, uh, Rayleigh's dissipation function kind of takes away from the beauty of the Euler Lagrange's equations, but then of course it deals effectively with um, trying to account for extracting energy from the system, right? It's the only way we know how to do it. Now, yeah, it's a, kind of a, a bit of a cheat the way you set up the Rayleigh function because you kind of have to know what the solution is coming up. But, you know, even for ordinary friction, using Newtonian mechanics, using Newton's laws, you guys can't, and none of us can, do anything but simple cases, constant friction or constant fluid dissipation, you know, proportioned to the velocity. That's about all we can do. All right, so I leave it at that. Uh, now, the next time I'm going to have a general talk about these lectures, right? Um, say why I'm doing, the, doing it. Talk about, uh, you know, so you guys, because I'm grateful to, to the people who sign up to, you know, watch these in the first place. I don't, I'm not looking for millions of people to watch, it's mostly for a record. That's all I'm doing these for. Okay, so talk later.